Hey there, I'm Lee Rowley, and this is Lee After Dark. Why? Because there's more to being a business leader than just business. Each episode, one brave entrepreneur ejects the elevator pitch and just gets real. Today, I'd like to welcome Steph Katz. Steph, how are you? I'm very well, Lee. How are you? I am fantastic. Now, the rules are simple. For the next 20 minutes, we can talk about whatever you want except your business. Okay. At the end, you'll have five minutes to pitch all you want. <laughs> but each time you slip up and talk, mention your business during the interview, you'll lose one minute of pitch time Ooh. at the end. So, Hard. yeah, uh, and, and I'm real strict about that too. So, you know, you're, you're definitely in for it. So, you ready to play? I am. <laughs> all right. Well, let me Challenge start the accepted. timer. Yes. All right. And go. What are we getting into for the next 20 minutes? Oh, is it? It's up to me? It's up to you. Yes, this oh. is your time. We want to hear about you. Okay. Well, how about if I talk about um, how I realized I wasn't effective, I was just a geek. Okay. All right. Um, back in 77, I was 15 years old, and I fell in love with this amazing movie that came out called Star Wars. Oh. Um, yes. But back in the day, especially then, you know, being a geek was not cool. And especially being a girl geek got you just more made fun of. Mm. So mm -hmm. um, I, I guess through high school, I kind of embraced it. But then when it's time to like grow up, go off to college and everything, I just buried that all way deep inside uh, because I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be accepted. Didn't want to be, you know, we weird. I, guess. I hate to call it weird, but you know what I mean. Um, just trying to be like everybody else. This was obviously in the 80s. Uh, diff totally different world than today. So I did the whole, you know, career, marry, raise my kids, all that type of thing. Oh, and the, the one thing that, the one place I could really indulge myself uh, was at Star Tra on the ride Star Tours at Disney World. Um, oh. Loved it. Went all the time, rode it multiple times. Um, so anyway, so fast forward to here in Orlando, 2017, and my son is, Who's like 19. Uh, he was a big fan also. So I was able to, you know, I was kind of letting it out some. And um, Star Wars Celebration came to Orlando. And it was there. Uh, I was sitting in the middle, or standing in the middle of the exhibit hall. And I realized I am not defective. I'm just a geek. And these were my people. And that was an amazing thing to me. Because the other thing I say is, it wasn't until the age of 50 that I was able to say three things. Um, the first, the word cancer. Uh, the second, I own my own business. And third, I'm pretty. Never in my life could I say those things until, until that age. So uh, that combined with the whole freedom from owning your own business and um, that moment, when I realized oh, I'm not effective, I'm just a geek, has brought me to this place where I can do things like be on your great podcast. <laughs> that was that was your pivot moment then. Is that, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's it's always interesting to see you know when people are dialed into that because I talk to so many people who don't really realize what's driving them now, and, and they and. They don't even realize how far away it is from what they wanted to be or what they what they plan to be, and they can't even really tell you how they got there. I, I can, and that's I'm I'm like really glad I can, and I realize the two things that are still holding me back that are left over back from those those school days. It's amazing how much effect <laughs> like junior high and high school have on us forever. It really is. Uh, a high impact uh, period of your life. And, you know, it's sometimes, I, I think, you know, uh, my wife and I and a lot of other people who, who have gone through this have just really noticed us in our 40s or, you know, some of the people that I know, I'm, I'm 46, but you know, a few people older than, than I am, that just start unraveling you know, these threads of like, wait a minute, this is why I've been like doing things com that are completely misaligned with who I am and what I want my life to look like because of things that happen back then. 
It is ama- It really is amazing. I mean, I'm like, I'm 57. How on earth is these things that happened 40 years ago still keeping me from doing what I need to do? Mm-hmm. Mostly marketing type things. Exactly. Well, it's, there's this perception that the past creates the present, right? That, you know, that what we've done creates what we're doing now. And, and so, you know, when, when I'm working with, with people or talking to people and, and they feel stuck, you know, I want to look, I, I look at them and go, the present creates the past, you know, because it's always the present, right? Yeah. Which basically takes away this, this process of the past builds the present. The, the past has to dictate what you do now and, and frees you up to do what you do now. Yeah. So there's no reason, awesome. there's no reason that the people in the lunchroom when I was 12, who told me, you know, get lost, loser, you can't say what that affects me to this day, but it does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it absolutely does. And half the battle's recognizing that. Yeah, and, and I'm glad that I've had this opportunity to realize that because mm-hmm. I would be, you know, to be in the nursing home feeling the same way I always did. You know, I was so, I kept myself hidden because I bought into that was my reality. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't one of those people that, you know, got the stuff like the popular kids did, the ones who, you know, had that control over me to tell me where my place was, let's say. Right, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I had a similar experience growing up uh, with, you know, it was, I was kind of on the, on the outside looking in. Yeah. Uh, at the popular crowd. I mean, so, you know, what did, you know, what did that feel like? I mean, going through that for you, because I mean, it was different for all of us. We would say like, I get it, but you know, you know what, would, what was your world like that, that so, so, uh, you know, loudly informs the present? I honestly believe that all the good stuff was for the other people. Like I didn't deserve it somehow. It's okay. really that, that worthiness. I think everything that we run into, you know, through our lives that keep us from what we really want is that whole feeling of oh, I'm not worthy or am I worthy? Who am I to do this, to have this, to be this? I, I think that that, and I put that, their opinion over mine because, you know, you're learning as a kid. And so that's what you're taught. I mean, at home, it was great and great parents. And, you know, you're told, hey, you're fantastic, you're wonderful, you can do anything, but then you go into the real world and these people are like, oh, no, you can't. And so I took that as gospel, I guess. You know, I, I believe them. So this transformation, this, this coming out of that, this pivot moment, if you will, you know, tell me about what the change that that's created in your life since then. I am my real self. I mean, I've got Darth Vader on one side of the car and Stormtrooper on the other. I'm driving around and I don't care what anybody thinks. It makes me happy. It's, I feel like I've come out of this box and I'm kind of like, this is me and you're going to hear about it and you're going to see it. And you know what? If you don't like it, I don't care, which is amazing because I, my whole life was, please like me. I'll be whoever you want if you just like me. And now I'm just like, you know what? It's okay. Because I'm liking me, I'm free to, you know, be me and and surround myself with the stuff that I love. That's beautiful. And there's people that go through their entire lives not being able to say that. I know. And I'm so glad that that I am able to. And I, I, I see a lot of young people these days able to do it younger and younger, which is amazing. I mean, I couldn't do it. It was 54. What do you think the difference is? It's a different world. I mean, you're just, like I said, even with the whole being a geek, it's celebrated now. Um, so there's a lot more of, yeah, I remember when, uh, what was the Marlo Thomas came out with the whole free to be you and me, uh, all those things that have come up that it's okay to be you. You're not, when I graduated college in 85, I mean, it was the whole corporate robot IBM person that, I, anyway, judge that, you know, we're all supposed to become, right? And so it's not like that anymore. 
I mean, look at all the people can make themselves anything with YouTube, all the social media, you can really be yourself, you know, from childhood on and, and it's celebrated now. Absolutely. Uh, one of the, the challenges that I see is that the, the generation now doesn't necessarily see that because uh, I was listening to a, a Gary Vaynerchuk piece uh, for a while ago where this, he, he said, to me, look, I wish I could take every person and just put them in their great grandfather's shoes for a day. Wow. And just, just to show them how, how many freaking opportunities they have now. Yeah. That didn't exist a hundred years ago. Didn't. Or, you know, and so, you know, I'm inclined to agree with you. And so it's also fostered, you know, a, a sense of diversity and a sense of inclusion and letting people find their space. Uh, because like you say, it took you 50 plus years to find your people. Yeah. And now it's potentially, you know, possible for somebody to find their people, you know, before they get damaged by all the things that, <laughs> that you and I went through, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Facebook groups, or obviously I'm thinking what we older people use. Younger people, you know, Snapchat or whatever it is, they're finding in the, these groups you can come together by interest, by background, whatever it is that you're looking, you know, to belong. Um, and we all want to find somewhere to belong. And it may not be, we only have the people who are right around us in our neighborhood or in our class or something to try and fit in with. And now you can find your people wherever they are in the world. That's true. That is true. Uh, I've got to look at the flip side though, you know, having that, that access to information and access to each other obviously opens the door for some unpleasantries uh, sure. as well. So, you know, what, you know, any thoughts on that as far as how that fits into, you know, finding your people and, you know, dealing with the people who don't want you to be you because there's still, you know, online bullying is still, bullying is just you know it doesn't involve getting shoved into a locker like I did yeah <laughs> those, those were just fun times weren't they mm -hmm. <laughs> school days um uh, well one thing you can do you have the option at least of let's say blocking some people or getting you know out of these groups it, it's it's not like it is your next door neighbor that's you know terrorizing you um, so there are some options and you know, I read somewhere that said unless you have a hater you haven't made it So you can also change your perspective you know if If someone is let's say bullying you and and my thing with bullying and even back in the day I mean it's someone can do whatever they want or say whatever they want about me But it's up to me whether I let that bother me mm -hmm. you know and, and um, I've gotten very good at about that I am responsible for my feelings no one can make me feel anything you know I can take any kind of whatever I mean because honestly yes I'm fat I'm old okay but so what and it's that so what that of course I only got with maturity and I'm hoping kids are getting a lot younger um, mm -hmm. I'd say my daughter has it but she went through something you know very terrible that a lot of people haven't haven't gotten um but i don't know with the i mean like you said it, it's bullying regardless if it is something where it is coming over the airwaves you can at least leave it i mean you don't have to be on that social media channel you can switch to another one okay. that is true there's always that that ability to choose uh, there's your, options. your friends you're right you know, there's options there's, that's what there know, are it, it's it be it friends or or influences you know, I grew up with, with three channels, maybe four, yeah. on a good, if the wind was blowing in the right direction, you know, but the amount of information and the amount of the, the people that I have access to now and the people that I had access to back then, obviously, same with you, are, are vastly, vastly different. If, uh, if you're comfortable about it, uh, if you'd like to talk about your daughter, because I think it kind of leads into one of the other things that you had uh, mentioned when, before we uh, started the interview. Sure. Yeah, my daughter was diagnosed at 12 with childhood cancer. We are one of the incredibly lucky families, so we still have her. Um, and we are five years out from her um, stem cell transplant. Um, but that was, uh, yeah, yeah, it, was, it kept coming back. And that was the only thing that got rid of it. And a lot of things happened uh, very bad in those three years, uh, a lot of suffering. Um, 
so, but like I said, I couldn't even say cancer before that. Mm-hmm. And um, it makes you, I guess, open to all of, yes, there's horrible stuff, but I, not so much I can deal with it, but it's just as much part of our life as all the good stuff. You know, we always want to feel good and, and concentrate on that. But, but there is this bad stuff too, that you just, you have to deal with. And, and I'm not sure where I'm going with that. Cause yeah, it was, it was a, it was a terrible time, but like I said, we're so, so, so very lucky because Absolutely. we don't have her because way, way too many people don't. And if somebody is going through that, you know, what would, you know, do you have any, anything, any words? Because, I mean, honestly, the, I've not been in that situation, that particular situation. I've shared some of other things with you privately, but, uh, you know, what would you say to somebody who's going through that? You honestly, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're so strong. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just, you have no strength. You have no choice. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you just do what you have to do. You'll get through it. Uh, there will be some laughter you know, along the way, believe it or not, um, just, just hang in there and well, how about don't let your kids see you cry. That's helpful. Okay. Okay. And she's doing well or or better. She is. Yeah. She's 19. She's in college and yeah, we're past that five year mark. That is so wonderful to hear. I'm always, always glad to hear when, uh, you know, when things like that at least turn out well. Yeah. Uh, and and though I know it was a, a struggle for you and, and a lot of pain for the family. I mean, it's something that strengthened you and her, your entire family. It did uh, change everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you, you don't walk away from something like that the same person. No. And, uh, you know. Definitely not. Sometimes that's not a bad thing. True. I will say you walk away with fewer friends, though. It's hard because, you know, people don't know what to do or say, so a lot of times it's nothing. <laughs> you walk away with fewer friends. Okay. So we've got a couple of minutes if we can touch on that because, uh, as, as you know, I, I lost a, a daughter. Uh, she was yeah. our, our only child. Um, and so I had a similar experience. So if you could tell me a little bit about that. Well, in the very beginning, people kind of rally around you. You know, all the stories like you see. Mm-hmm. and. Sure. You think, oh, okay, there's going to be lots of support. And there is, but as it kept coming back, you know, humans don't want to hear what they assume they're going to hear. And so, therefore, like I said, they and they don't know what to ask. They don't know what to say. They just do that, you know, let me know if you need anything. And no mm-hmm. one in that situation is ever going to reach out. You're just not. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> so some advice for people who have friends in those situations, you know, go mow their grass bring them food, it, just do things rather than wait for you because there's no, you are not going to reach out. You just, you just aren't. So anyway, as it just keeps coming back and people just assume that at some point they're going to hear words they don't want to hear. So they just don't, they don't call, they don't come by. They just kind of float away. And then you can't really go back to the way it was. And you know, before you just, you just can't. Yeah. That's, you know, if you're listening to this and you're going through that, uh, you know, at least you know it's not just you. Um, we oh. had a similar experience, and uh, you know, I, I think the you know the process of it is so exhausting that you know you just you can't ask. It's like no. you know you need something, you can't even articulate what you need. Exactly. Right. So, oh, yeah. you know, how are you going to ask and you don't want to impose and you know, everybody's tired of hearing you complain and, you know, all of these things that go on inside of you that keep you from asking. So that's, thank you very much for, for what you said and, you know, for sharing uh, that with us. Thank you for being so open. I really appreciate you just coming on the show and just, you know, letting me you know, poke around and, and, you know, and just sharing your experience. So well, thank you for giving Wonderful. me the opportunity. Absolutely. It's well, you know, amazing. We, yeah. So you've uh, successfully completed the 20 minute Lee after dark challenge Woo! with no infractions. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I'm a man of my word. So five minutes on the clock, you can tell us about your business, your offer, tell people how to contact you. Floor is yours. Okay. Well, basically, well, 
at the end of my daughter's story, um, it was her Make-A-Wish trip uh, that made me see the difference between the whole do-it-yourself and hope for the best and just have the anonymous call centers to fall back on if you need any help or assistance when you travel, and that's where we're going to travel. Um, and the difference is amazing. And it really is that having a real life person who cares, who supports you, you know, who's there for anything, because you book a trip and you have questions, you want more information, or you, and you want to share along the way. And so a travel agent, real life person is that great alternative to that. And so I put myself into the industry of fun and memories after what I went through. Um, any of our vacations could be our last with our loved ones. So they all should be spectacular. So like I said, the, the big difference is that I am that real life person to help. And so people can contact me. The, I called myself the travel superhero uh, in part because if I called myself the travel Jedi, I may have heard from Lucasfilm and gotten in some mm -hmm. copyright issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of went with the more generic superhero. Um, I also, because no one is going to say, what was the name of that travel agent we met last year? So I made it memorable, kind of like my very first way of making things more convenient. Uh, for people. So uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Everything is the travel superhero and on my um, social media. And uh, oh, and it, it does not cost extra to use a travel agent. The pricing is the same. You just are getting the customer service that you actually pay for. Awesome. Okay. And so they can go to uh, the travel superhero.com. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Facebook.com, the travel, travel superhero. superhero. And we will have these links in the show notes too, so that they can just click through and uh, check everything out that you have to offer from there. Well, that's really cool. And, you know, having been through a few uh, challenging do it yourself trips, I can definitely <laughs> see the value of that. So, uh, definitely, you know, expedient, convenient, but, you know. <laughs> but it's like, who are, what are you getting? Right. You know, it is. And so it's mm -hmm. fantastic. You know, if you want to do that, do your research, do everything. But if you let me book it, then you're going to have me to fall back on rather than who knows who, who knows where. I once spent, uh, I, I once stood at a pier watching the back end of a cruise ship oh, as no. it sailed away because they wouldn't let us on because plans got screwed up because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I wow. would definitely say, you know, if, if you're anything like me and you don't love planning this stuff, go talk to staff. You know, <laughs> I can definitely see the value in it. Well, you know, uh, we are out of time. So thank you again so much for, for sharing uh, about, you know, your personal life, about your daughter, your business, You've been a delight. Thank you so much. Thank you. How fun. Absolutely. Excellent. We are out of time, but if okay. you found Lee After Dark more entertaining and relevant than most of the drag out there, subscribe to the Lee After Dark YouTube channel and now get Lee After Dark in your pants. We're on Google Podcasts, Spotify, <laughs> Anchor FM, Stitcher, Breaker, Pocket Cast, and who the heck else knows where. So you can enjoy us wherever you stick your phone. Until next time, this is Lee Rowley with my new friend, Steph Katz. Be present and be well.